All right, so uh, <laughs> let's get started. So we have this thing attached to a mobile hotspot because we hope to do a demo afterwards. And I don't know if that is being provided by like Canadian Wi-Fi or Canadian uh, 5G or, or what, but we'll see if this works. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm Aaron Berkland. And um, so Nina and I are going to talk about adapting to ambient with Glue Mesh. Um, so before we start, um, how many of you either use or are familiar with glue mesh in, in particular right now? Okay, a few. How many are you know use uh, Istio directly and may be considering glue mesh? Okay. All right. So this is the, the point of this is to kind of give a high level overview of how glue mesh could be helpful in adapting to ambient. Um, because as you peel away the layers, there are actually um, a few nuances that uh, you need to be aware of when adapting to ambient mesh. So this kind of gives you a, a, a big, big picture of what's going on and how glue mesh can be helpful. And I'll try to be quick um, for uh, this increasingly inaccurately named uh, 10 o'clock <laughs> uh, talk about, uh, about glue mesh. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through this rather quickly, but it's, it's good just to start with the classic sidecar architecture. We talked about this earlier. You all uh, probably know this, but um, suffice to say, the um, important part is that uh, the Istio API, so by API, I mean the custom resources, the Istio custom resources, the virtual services, the destination rules, service entries, et cetera, are all implemented by the uh, Envoy instances that are injected uh, into each pod, the sidecars, so to speak. Um, and so basically you define the topology of your mesh and the policies in terms of the Istio API and Istio then translates it into uh, Envoy's primitives. So Envoy is kind of the lower level implementation here and Istio, um, you know, the mesh is specified in terms of, uh, in terms of Istio. Now, um, as your use case becomes more complex, as you, like for example, involve uh, multi-cluster use cases or service isolation, or your mesh grows big, then um, uh, it can be a little bit, uh, defining the mesh in terms of Istio primitives be can become a little bit tricky. And that's where glue mesh enters the picture. Uh, glue mesh uh, is a higher level API and um, introduces some concepts such as workspaces and such as virtual destinations that can make it a little bit easier to specify your mesh in you know, complex scenarios. But ultimately what glue mesh is doing is uh, it's taking this high level glue mesh API, translating it into Istio resources, which could be fairly complex for implementing uh, service isolation in a multi-cluster environment, and then Istio's configuring the Envoy instances. So, so far so good, nothing radically different here. Um, now we enter in the ambient architecture. And, you know, as alluded to earlier today, so ambient kind of, um, it, it, its big thing is that it pulls the implementation of the service mesh away from the pods. So it decouples it from the pods. So the pods can have their own operational life cycle. It's not at all coupled to the life cycle of Istio. And the separation of those two uh, offers um, considerable you know, operational uh, complexity uh, benefits because it reduces the operational complexity. So, um, as we heard earlier today, at the base layer is this Z tunnel, which actually is implemented as a proxy on each node. Um, and basically that just does point to point uh, MTLS, like this, these pipelines between uh, different service accounts. Um, so if we add uh, waypoint proxies into the picture. Um, as mentioned earlier today, uh, the, the, um, the Z tunnels only, like they're only concerned with the uh, layer, layer four concerns. So if you actually have policy, if you actually uh, need to know what an HTTP request is, what a header is, what a, uh, what, what a path is, et cetera, then you need to go into the L7 world and then uh, that means you need waypoint proxies. Um, and the idea is that the Z tunnels can forward traffic to waypoint proxies for implementing that. Um, here's where things start to get a little bit tricky. 
Also earlier today, you, you learned about the uh, Gateway API, and that's what Istio uses right now in order to specify that, yes, in fact, we need these waypoint proxies. So let's take a look at this real, real quick, right? So here we have a gateway resource that we created. Uh, we put it in, 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 our, in, our, uh, in our cluster. And if you look at these annotations, you see this you know, annotations, Istio IO service account, and we've named, the, uh, we've named a specific service account. So that brings forward a number of questions, okay? So out of the box, ambient, just comes with these Z tunnels, right? And we need to opt in to waypoint proxies. And so one of the points of uh, ambient mesh is for um, reduction of costs, reduction of proxies that you don't need. So, so you need to opt into these things. However, the consequence is that out of the box, the entire Istio API is, you know, it's not implemented by Z tunnels. It's, in, it's implemented kind of incrementally as you add these waypoint proxies, which is a notable nuance. So yeah, so this, this kind of begs a number of questions as you actually get to use it. So what does it mean to have a waypoint for a service account in the first place? And so if you're responsible for specifying when to use these uh, these waypoint proxies, how do you know when it is necessary to create them? How do you know which ones you need? And then there's the question about um, affinity, like node affinity of these, these, uh, uh, these waypoint proxies, scaling, high availability, what sort of API is, is, is available for these? So diving in a little bit deeper, um, it, as it turns out, especially if you're familiar with Istio, uh, it, it becomes clear that although the Istio API has not changed for Ambient, there is a fairly different mental model that you need to adjust to and have in your mind. So this sort of, this, this is a, a quick scenario that kind of gets at the, the, the meat of that, okay? So in this scenario, we have a reviews reviews pod, like a review service, and one of its pods can make requests to a rating service or out to the internet, right? Um, and let's say that we have two different Istio resources, a virtual service and a service entry, okay? Um, and let's trace what happens uh, when reviews makes a request of ratings, right? So. A request, the, the, the request comes from the pod and it goes to the Z tunnel, which is uh, part of the node, that, which, is, which is on the node that uh, uh, co-located with the pod from reviews that's making the request. And then the Z tunnel knows to route that to the waypoint for ratings. And that presumes that this waypoint exists. If there is no ratings waypoint, it simply won't, and you simply will not get this, the, the, uh, the virtual service will not be implemented. Let's say that it has some, uh, some weights, and so it directs most of the traffic to V1, and maybe a small percentage to V2, you're doing a canary thing. In order for that to work, you need that ratings waypoint. And if you're familiar with, with, uh, with the functioning of Istio, you might be taken a little bit taken aback by this because in cl the classic sidecar mode, um, virtual services, they, they define routing rules and they are typically implemented on the client side. So if that reviews had a sidecar, right? The sidecar would intercept the request, do the routing there that is implied by the virtual service and the client sidecar will send it where it needs to be. Here it's different. Here reviews sends a request to a server side a ratings waypoint that has nothing to do with the review service and it's routed from there. So if you're familiar with Istio, it kind of flips the, um, you know, where virtual services are implemented, uh, it's, it's kind of backwards from sidecars. Um, likewise, if we consider service entries, right? Reviews makes a request to, let's say, HTTP, HTTP bin, goes to the uh, Z tunnel, and it goes through a different waypoint where policy is enacted and then goes out to the internet. Well, that is a, oh, wait a minute, that's the reviews waypoint. What's up with that? Well, uh, so, you know, 
external services on the internet don't really have their own waypoints. And so we're actually using a waypoint deployed for the service account reviews in a client side manner in order to implement that service entry. So you can really dig deep into, uh, you know, even though the Istio API hasn't changed, there are some fundamental differences down underneath of how Istio is implementing its own API and what happens to requests. So, um, yeah, so in order to really, you know, leverage those gateway resources in order to define the set of waypoints that you want, there are some nuances and some, some things that you need to consider. And so who here is looking for more nuances in a service mesh? <laughs> a, a, a few. Um, you know, some j basically just 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 want this to work, right? Um, you you want you want to have a service mesh. You want to take you know, you, you let's say you have a, a a service mesh in the sidecar world, and you want to take advantage of some of the you know uh, some of the cost reductions and decoupling that Ambient provides. Do you need to learn this in order to do so? If you're using Istio directly, probably. If you want to take advantage of it, but. Uh, this is where Glue Mesh kind of has you covered because we we spoke before that you know Glue Mesh provides a high level API which is then translated into Istio primitives, and so um, in this case the you know Istio API is the same, but then we have these 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 uh, waypoint proxies which you know who knows what waypoint proxies we need, so. In other words, like Glue Mesh basically it presents to you the same abstractions, the same Glue Mesh API, but under the hood, Glue Mesh is doing uh, doing things a little bit differently for Ambient. So one of the you know major uh, major components that we found out that we needed in order to implement Glue Mesh for Ambient is a waypoint lifecycle management. So uh, the Glue Mesh API has uh, the notion of workspaces. From there, we know which services communicate with which other services. We know what Glue Mesh translates you know, into in terms of the Istio API. And so we can infer which uh, waypoints are actually necessary for a given use case. So Glue Mesh is able to optimize this. Now, you could always run Ambient Istio with like, you know, waypoint proxies everywhere, and, and that would work, but that wouldn't really give you, you know, that's not really an optimal scenario. So Glue Mesh can kind of uh, do that optimization under the hood. Likewise, uh, factors like, uh, like scaling, like how many of these waypoint proxies do you need, affinity, et cetera, there's, th right now there is, no, uh, there is no solid answer for that as far as the, um, as far as the APIs available in Ambient Istio. That's something which may very well be exposed down the road, but it's something that we wanted to like expose control of now. So we kind of interact with these waypoint proxies at a lower level where we can influence factors like that. And so we provide an opt-in API for like, if you're interested in, in, in you know, uh, influencing th those aspects, it's, it's a knob that's available. Um, likewise, Glue Mesh uh, provides an, a UI which, which shows the you know, topology of, of uh, your mesh and the traffic in it, et cetera. But um, the metrics you get from Istio are, from ambient Istio are different. And, those, and that UI is ultimately built from metrics harvested from Istio. So if you can just, just, just imagine that with sidecars, you can harvest metrics from each sidecar and pretty much everything is uniform. In the ambient world, you have Z tunnels and then you have waypoint proxies, some waypoint proxies, they're not everywhere. So you gotta, kinda gotta stitch these together and get like a big picture um, of, of, of how everything holistically works together. And that's, you know, I don't have enough time to delve into the details of that, but just suffice it to say that that was another challenge, you know, underneath, uh, uh, you know, getting, getting Glue Mesh to, you know, work with Ambient, and there's some slight changes there. And lastly, this bullet point, managing risk. Um, so Istio Ambient is alpha. 
Um, it is evolving. It's 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 API might change in certain respects. You know, it's, you know, we we can't we can't necessarily predict how it will evolve. But the idea is that um, glue mesh kind of acts as a buffer layer in the sense that you know we try to keep the same API for glue mesh, just uh, translate it a little bit differently to the uh, reality of the Istio underneath it, and we plan to keep track of the changes to Istio and and. Uh, will leverage new features and, and otherwise, uh, you know, just be able to uh, provide a solid, stable platform where you can experiment with with Ambient and uh, and be a bit insulated from the alphaness of the underlying Istio. So that's kind of it in a, in a quick nutshell in this 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 uh, short presentation time. And so Nina is going to give a demo of this in action. Can you hear me okay? Okay, awesome. So yeah, fingers crossed, uh, we're still connected to the hotspot, but um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so first of all, I'll pull up the Glue Mesh UI. So this is the uh, UI that Aaron was mentioning, and in my example, I have two GKE clusters. One has the Glue Mesh management server installed, and the other has our Glue Mesh agent installed and uh, Ambient Istio. So then uh, if we go to the graph, um, this kind of shows the metrics that Aaron mentioned. So uh, currently I only have, I don't have any waypoints. So all of these metrics are coming from the Z tunnel. And I'm gonna use uh, the uh, book info app example to, to demonstrate some uh, traffic routing and uh, waypoint creation. So um, if you're familiar with book info, uh, you have the product page, which uh, kind of looks like this. Um, let's see if the refresh is still connected. Oh, look at that. So <laughs> based on the reviews you hit, you'll either get uh, no stars for reviews v1, or uh, black stars for reviews v2, or red stars for reviews v3. Um, and that's just important to keep in mind as I, I demonstrate some stuff. So let's actually take a look at what's in our, uh, in our cluster. Um, so this is the remote cluster that's registered with the agent, and on it I have three different nodes. So looking at the first node, um, there's some glue mesh resources here um, that we can use for XDOF and, and rate limiting. But um, more importantly, we have our Z tunnel, which is the daemon set that uh, controls all the L4 um, MTLS or like uh, L4 authentication policies that you might have, uh, authorization policies. Um, and then we also have our Istio CNI node, um, which is also per node. Um, and that's uh, managing all the redirect logic for uh, building the IP table rules. Um, let's go back. So on the second node, we have uh, actually our book info, or like a subset of our book info here. So we have product page, ratings, reviews, V1 and V2. Um, and then again, also Z tunnel and uh, Istio CNI. So one thing you might notice here is uh, there aren't any sidecars. So uh, in product page, I actually have a curl container uh, just to test some traffic that we're gonna be sending. Um, but all of these are just the, the container itself and all the traffic is gonna go through the Z tunnel or the waypoint proxy when we create one. And then uh, the final node that we have is, um, oh, it has the last part of our, our book info app. So it has reviews V3 and uh, the details here. And again, Z tunnel and uh, Istio uh, CNI node. Cool, okay, now that we got that out of the way, we can actually uh, route some traffic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply a header match example um, using the glue mesh API. So in order to do uh, subset routing in GlueMesh, let me make this full screen, yeah, a little easier to see. We uh, create this route table resource, um, and in this example, we're gonna either route to reviews v2 based on this header being there, the uh, user, uh, Istio custom user, or if the header isn't present, we're gonna route to uh, reviews v1. So I'm gonna apply that, and um, Let's actually send some traffic. So uh, like I mentioned, we have in the product page a nice uh, curl container. So we're gonna go from the product page to reviews and just send uh, a little bit of traffic. Um, cool, okay. It's very slow because of the, the Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, and you might notice that there aren't any uh, stars associated with this. So it seems like our subset match worked um, because we didn't have the header in this request. So now let's try a, a, a request with the, the header included. So again, going from product page through uh, the curl container to reviews. And then here we have our, our black stars returned. And let's just do that one more time for, for sanity check. <laughs> um, just to make sure it's like consistent. So again, with the header, we should get our um, black stars back. Cool, okay, so what happened behind the scenes? 
So let's look at what's inside of BookInfo. So one thing I didn't mention is BookInfo is labeled for ambient. So this is why um, traffic is routing through the Z tunnel and why this waypoint proxy has just gone created. So we saw uh, GlueMesh has magically created a waypoint proxy based on our, only our route table that we applied. So because this route table has the head, uh, header match here, um, we create this waypoint proxy to manage the L7 uh, policy there. So let's, uh, let's look at the logs just to make sure that we're actually going through the waypoint. And yeah, cool. So we, we got some connections. That looks good. Um, and they're, they're hitting the reviews uh, endpoint there. Cool. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is apply, um, so that was just simple subset routing. Let's apply uh, an actual L7 policy. So in GlueMesh, if you want to apply fault injection, you can apply it based on um, the route table you defined earlier. So here uh, we're using the, the route table labels that we defined um, from our route table before. And um, another thing to note, like this route table is specifically for east-west traffic. That's where we're going from pod to pod, but um, it's matching on the, the label that we, we had here. Cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's apply that, and then let's send some traffic. So um, again, we're going to go from product page and hit reviews, and we're expecting uh, to hit this 418 response. So yeah, so we get our fault filter report. Um, and if we again look behind the scenes, uh, what happened in book info. Um, you can see that we're still using the same waypoint proxy that was created before because we don't need a new one since the policy is being applied to review still. Um, so at this point, um, you might notice I didn't create any gateway resources. And the reason for that is that Glue Mesh has, uh, like based on the higher level API that we have defined, knows when you need L7 policies in place. So it kind of makes it easier to test out ambient um, as, you know, with the same API as before, um, just, you know, with a different Istio installation, which is kind of cool because you still, you don't have to like enumerate all the gateways you need. You don't need to like know where your gateway goes. You kind of just get it out of the box. Um, but if you do want to customize some stuff, we do have a new um, resource that lets you do that. So um, this Ambient Lifecycle Manager um, lets you uh, select the service account that you want to change uh, the, the Waypoint deployment spec for. So um, like all the talks mentioned before, the Waypoint proxy is tied to the service account. So it doesn't scale like the sidecar used to like because that was you know per pod. Um, so here um, in our examples, reviews V1, V2, and V3 are all using the same service account. So we can uh, 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 select that service account and then change like the number of replicas as a simple example. So let's try applying that. And then if we take a look at what happened in book info again. Um, so now we have two waypoint proxies running. Um, and uh, one thing to note is they're running in the same uh, node. So if you wanted to change the, uh, the node affinity or the, um, where the waypoint proxy gets deployed, you can add a pod affinity uh, value to uh, make sure the waypoint proxy gets deployed at where a specific review service is. So um, currently it used to be in um, the node where reviews uh, v3 is. So we're gonna select v2 now and uh, apply that. And then take a look again. Um, and cool, so this one's terminating and uh, this one it should be running in a different node. So you see this is the, the one that's uh, going down and then this one is the, the new waypoint proxy that we configured. Um, so that gives you both the ability to like just try Ambient out of the box without changing any of your underlying APIs to see how it works. But it also lets you have the flexibility to configure uh, where it gets deployed, you know, how many replicas you want and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all I had for the demo. Um,